My guys, it is an absolutely brutal midsummer day in the middle of May here in the uh, former paradise of Garfield, Texas here in the end times. We have made it to Tuesday morning, uh, May 15th, 2018. So I got to dive into finally my two uh, my Tuesday doomsday headlines. I'm, I'm giving up on my Monday headlines. I, I'm still t in, in, in trying to catch up uh, for the Monday headlines. For the, so what happened for the second time in two days, you know, I've been out there in that goddamn barn with the uh, tin roof over it, and after about 30 minutes, I, I, my camera just shuts down. I mean, you almost burn your hand on the camera, so uh, since my camera cannot tolerate the brutal heat of a, of a May uh, in, in the end times, I'm coming in here to uh, get in front of my brand new uh, air conditioner uh, that I bought last week, you know, after I blew up my other air conditioner, so I guess it's probably sitting in some landfill right now. But anyway, maybe I can finally get through my Tuesday doomsday headlines for the week, and I did want to start over there uh, in Jerusalem, uh, you know, to see how the Battle of Armageddon is shaping up in Israel today. But before we get into that, I thought this might be a good a good place to start and I want to send this out to my buddy Max in Finland in Finland where it was right at 100 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday and uh, I believe Max is out in Scandinavia in May buying his first ever air conditioner to keep his computers cool so his computers don't crash like my camera just did. So we're going to send this one out to Max. Global demand for air conditioning to triple by 2050. The worldwide demand for air conditioning is expected to triple over the next 30 years, making the pursuit of energy efficient cooling systems a top priority. Take the International Energy Agency said Tuesday, once again, this is how we're going to approach uh, the little problem of a never-ending uh, expanding human population with the money to buy air conditioners uh, from the supply side in front of, instead of the demand side. Okay, this is this uh, latest report from our friends at the International Energy Agency <coughs> said this morning. Today, some 1.6 billion buildings worldwide have AC, a number that will grow to 5.6 billion by 2050, which amounts to 10 new air conditioners sold every second of every day for the next 30 years. The amount of power needed to meet this anticipated surge in indoor cooling will equal today's combined electricity capacity of the United States, the European Union, and Japan today. There you go. Uh, quoting uh, Faith Byral of the executive director of the IEA Growing electricity demand for air conditioning is one of the most critical blind spots in today's energy debate. With rising incomes, air conditioner ownership will skyrocket.
skyrocket, especially in the emerging world. The emerging world. Alright, we're going to come back to uh, more of those stories, but let's go back to where I was planning to start this rant, and that's over there in Israel, where we see the Battle of Armageddon uh, heating up in Israel thanks to Donald Trump moving the uh, U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. So the, the number one story on Yahoo News this morning, Israel faces diplomatic fallout after dozens killed in Gaza. Uh, Israel, Israel faced a growing backlash Tuesday and new charges of using excessive force the day after Israeli troops firing from across a border fence killed 59 Palestinians and wounded more than 2,700 at a mass protest in Gaza. So we have 59 dead, 2,700 in the hospital. If there is anybody on this planet uh, denying that we aren't going to start seeing some backlash from them Muslims, and it ain't going to be uh, a diplomatic fallout. It is going to be a bloodbath. Uh, that and anyone looking for the number one radicalizer of Muslims on planet Earth, it will be none other than Donald Trump. And you can expect to see, if not in the next seven days, certainly in the next 30 days, you will see another major them Muslims terrorist attacks and you can thank Donald Trump for it as the long overdue Battle of Armageddon heats up here in the end times in May of 2018. But uh, we almost didn't have to worry about the Battle of Armageddon I don't know if this has happened yet, an asteroid the size of the Statue of Liberty is whizzing past Earth today. Somewhere in a, in a sky near you is an asteroid the size of the Statue of Liberty. Hmm. Alright, assuming we can avoid that, see how well we can avoid this one. Do China's missiles in the South China Sea mean war? Or has Beijing now cemented its claim? The South China Sea has the potential to become a cauldron of conflict and China is stoking the fire by claiming uh, perhaps as much as 90% of the South China Sea, Beijing is trampling on the rights of other nations in the region, nations who, whose exclusive economic zones and national waters are being violated. Yep. Yep, yep, anybody who thinks we need to go to uh, the Battle of Armageddon in the Mideast to find out where World War III is brewing, apparently has not been paying attention to Humpty Dumpty Tribe. As long as we're talking about uh, the Pentagon, which is what we're talking about, in case you're unaware of it, we're talking about the Pentagon. <coughs> The Pentagon cannot account for $21 trillion. That is not a typo. $21 trillion. The Pentagon's own numbers show that it cannot account for $21. Yes, I mean trillion with a T. Okay, so, you know, 
uh, they always try to put this in numbers uh, about how we can think about this. The human brain is not meant to think about one trillion dollars. So let's stop and take a second to conceive how much twenty one trillion dollars is. Which you can't because our brains short short circuit, but we'll try anyway. This is from Truth Dig. Okay. <clears throat> the amount of money supposedly in the stock market is thirty trillion dollars. The GDP of the United States is eighteen point six trillion dollars. Okay. So if you placed a stack of one thousand dollar bills, a stack of not one dollar bills, of one thousand dollar bills, stack them up, the stack would be sixty three miles high. Imagine you make forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I really try to imagine that. How long would it take you to make one trillion dollars? It would take you 25 million years to make one trillion dollars. Uh, anyway, I'm already losing track. Do your own math. 20, 1 trill, 21 trillion dollars falling in a black hole Okay, what is on the minds of George Monbiot today here in The Guardian? Uh, I'm going to come back and read this entire essay on my sister channel, Collapse Chronicles, uh, after I finish this rant. So if you want to hear the entire uh, rant, you can tune in to Collapse Chronicles. George Monbiot. How to accelerate the destruction of nature? Put a price on it. I'm just going to uh, read the first two paragraphs, and you can come and you can come back to my other channel to listen to the rest of it. Never mind that the new environmental watchdog will have no teeth. Never mind that the government plans to remove protection from local wildlife sites. Never mind that its 25-year environment plan is all talk and no action. We don't need rules anymore. We have a pouch of magic powder we can sprinkle on any problem to make it disappear. This powder is the monetary valuation of the natural world through the market, through the market, we can avoid conflicts and hard choices, laws and policies by replacing political decisions with economic calculations. Okay, and it was a tough call for today's. Uh, doomsday sermon on Collapse Chronicles between George Monbiot's latest in The Guardian and Darge Mail's latest in Truthout. And what is on uh, Darge's mind uh, in Truthout? Billions of people will be displaced by <coughs> sea level rise. Uh, anyway, guys, what uh, what this story is mostly talking about? I've been talking a lot about these new reports, particularly coming from Antarctica, but coming from the Arctic as well, about what it means for all of the this uh, these polar ice caps melting into the oceans. Uh, everything from the collapse of ocean currents to sea level rise as more and more uh, of this shit is happening faster 
been previously thought and DAR is mainly talking uh, about sea level rise. Uh, I'm just this. This is just the uh, this is just the the truth outs lead in to the story before getting into the presentation by DAR. Antarctic glaciers are melting at dramatic rates. Scientists are finding. Antarctica is, of course, a continent of ice roughly twice the size of Australia. The retreat of its oceanfront glaciers raises serious concerns about the resulting rise in sea levels. The most severe projections of potential impact are almost impossible to grasp. Billions of people displaced, coastal cities disappeared, yet the Washington Post was virtually alone among major outlets in reporting the latest findings. And as I've been saying for over a year now, good for the Washington Post. They have become the single most honest environmental reporting of all of the mainstream media uh, rags. Uh, corporate media have, outside of the Washington Post, stopped entertaining denial of human, of human driven climate disruption, but that's a long, long way from the serious and sustained attention that would be appropriate to the myriad problems involved and it is categorically different than actually picking a side in the question of priority over guesswork invokes planet or profit. Planet or profit. And then uh, Dar Jamal uh, using that as his launch pad, uh, talking about not only the collapse of uh, the collapse of the uh, ice sheets and, and all this, but how the mainstream media is just completely ignoring the single biggest story on the planet. Uh, Jamel's new book, The End of Ice, Bearing Witness and Finding Meaning in the Path of Climate Disruption will be coming out shortly. I would like to thank uh, Dar Jamal would let me interview him, but I won't get into the reason why Dar Jamal will never talk to Hambone Littletail. Uh, you might be able to figure it out for your own, but I'm not going to get into that. Okay, as long as we're talking, we've gotten into the climate change uh, section of today's Doomsday Headlines from EcoWatch. Researchers uncover new phase of globalization with major climate consequences and if anybody does not understand the dots between the air conditioning sales and this story, obviously you're, you're failing to understand the collapse of the planet. Research published Monday in Nature Communications raised concerns about how economic shifts in the developing world might impact global efforts to reduce carbon emissions and fight climate change. Researchers at the University of East Anglia and partners in China and the U.S. identified, quote, a new phase of globalization, uh, talking about all of this trade increased by more than two times between 2004 and 2011 and it is only ramping up and part of this shift has meant that high emissions activities such as the production of raw materials and intermediate goods are moving from rapidly developing countries like China and India to lesser developed countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam. 
a move that could have serious consequences uh, as the carbon dioxide emissions of exports from less developed countries has only increased. And you better believe this is only going to uh, skyrocket. Uh, as long as we're over there at Eco Watch, I just wanted to, uh, in case you missed my uh, headlines yesterday, uh, this headline pretty much says it all. Donald Trump kills NASA carbon monitoring program as CO2 levels soar past troubling 410 parts per million threshold. Again, I've already covered this story, so I must move along. How about <clears throat> toxic algae blooms occurring more often and may be caught in climate change feedback loop. The algae blooms primarily fed by farm runoff but exacerbated by global warming release methane and carbon dioxide and Lake Erie is a poster child for the challenge. Do you think so? What's going on over at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory? Climate models underestimate global warming by exaggerating cloud brightening. Uh, anyway, guys, this is way too technical to get into, but the bottom line is uh, that researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and Yale University uh, looking at climate models uh, from this angle uh, concluding that uh, th th this oversight and this miscalculation may be causing models <clears throat> to underestimate how much global warming will occur due to increasing carbon dioxide. There's one more reason you will be reading these future faster than expected. Uh, anyone, I got some bad news for Paul Beckwith and anybody cheering on uh, the Kilauea volcano eruption hoping it's going to save the planet. Bloomberg has some bad news for you. Kilauea's eruption is big, but not big enough to cool the planet. Yes, it is not yet big enough to slow global warming as past volcanic eruptions have. Um, there you go. Anyway, I would love to get in to this one more. Okay, so how are we going to save the coral reefs from global warming? How about a new gene editing system could one day aid coral conservation. Increasing ocean water temperatures have put the survival of coral reefs at high risk over the past few decades. Hmm. Recent findings have sparked concern for the survival of these reefs. Hmm. While there is not yet a solution, Hmm. Scientists can now study the gene functioning of corals. Yes. And in a recent study, Stanford scientists and their colleagues used the CRISPR 
gene editing system to modify genes in Carl. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, this is from the Atlantic Magazine. I, I was glad to see uh, the headline, Younger Republicans are slightly more liberal on climate change, but I was more interested and somewhat surprised, I have to admit, from the newest version of the Pew Research Center's annual environmental poll. Uh, and they actually talk about geoengineering, namely solar radio, radiation management, otherwise known uh, as chemtrails. Uh, and I've always been saying, you know, these clueless fucking morons are going just to fully support it. But finally, we have the Pew Research Center asking Americans how they feel about solar geoengineering, which entails spraying a chemical into the high atmosphere that will reflect some of the sun's heat back into space, that this is an attempt to mimic the cooling effect of a volcanic eruption. Uh, economists and climate scientists say solar geoengineering is the most feasible method available to actively cool the warming planet. But, uh, Americans are skeptical of, of it. Pew found in the first time the research agency asked the question, about 70% of Americans said that solar geoengineering would either do, quote, more harm than good, or have no effect uh, on, on helping global warming. Democrats were more likely than Republicans to see promise in geoengineering. Good God. So I think I've already mentioned this, but it bears repeating going over there to the shithole country of India as the UN names Kanpur, India, the world's most polluted city. Uh, the biggest hospital there is so overcrowded with patients with respiratory ailments that they are often bedded in the ophthalmology ward. Jesus, uh, talking all about uh, the World Health Organization, naming it, uh, and I think the next 13 cities on the list after Kanpur, every one of them in the shithole country of India, but like most other Indian cities, Kanpur does not have the infrastructure to fight air pollution. Hmm. And only a handful of the country's 100 most polluted cities have action plans to combat air pollution. Action plans to combat air pollution. Okay, from the shithole country of India to the shithole country of Russia, no time to waste. Moscow urged to recycle, not burn. Protests have been growing in recent months over the stench from landfill sites around Moscow, overflowing with millions of tons of garbage. Authorities have now decided on a plan to tackle the problem 
generating energy by burning the waste instead. <clears throat> but their course of action has sparked public fears over pollution. <coughs> Russia produces almost 70 million tons of garbage per year. This is Greenpeace Russia's Alexei Kaiselov. Quote, Russia seems to be fulfilling the prediction that mankind will die from choking in its own rubbish. Do you think so? But uh, if you think it's all bad news on the planet, just like in my rant that I just finished, uh, cheering on Ebola, we now have some more good news. Pig virus, which is a potential threat to humans, has scientists worried. A recently identified pig virus could pose a potentially lethal threat to human populations. The pathogen shows similarities to the deadly viruses responsible for SARS and MERS. <coughs> so we do have a ray of hope and right here in the shithole state of California STDs reached a record high in California last year according to state health authorities. The number of cases of sexually transmitted disease in California reached a record high last year. Uh, and officials are particularly concerned by a spike in stillbirths. A spike in stillbirths due to congenital syphilis, state health authorities said on Monday. Uh, well, and I think there were some more good news. If left untreated, chlamydia and gonorrhea can lead to infertility. All right, so a ray of hope in California. I've mentioned this story in previous rants, but it bears repeating. Let's go over to the shithole country of Madagascar. In Madagascar, rush for precious stones threatens a precious forest. The discovery of sapphires in a remote part of eastern Madagascar has fueled an influx of people into the region ravaging a protected forest that is home to unique wildlife uh, while raising concerns over security and pollution. According to the Associated Press, tens of thousands of miners and traders in recent months have flooded into parts of the forest, a nearly one million acre rainforest in the island nation, cutting down thousands of acres of forest to mine for gems beneath the trees. Uh, these forests are home to 14 endangered species of lemur and more than 2,000 species of plants found nowhere else on the planet. And then uh, I got a little bit of a chuckle out of this story, what drones mean for farming and the countryside. And out of this long, long, long involved article about how drones are going to uh, save the planet, uh, you really have to dig 
deeper and deeper and deeper into the article to find one mention of, here we go, there is one sentence out of this uh, Atlas Shrugged article, sized article buried away towards the bottom. There are also worries that increased use of drones may have a negative impact on the number of jobs available to agricultural workers. Oh, shit, Sherlock. All right. From the robot revolution to the New England cottontail rabbit science uh, trying to save Peter Cottontail, whose populations have been declining over the past 50 years, uh, new, since 1960, New England cottontails have lost more than 80% of their habitat to make way for housing developments and farmland. Yep, 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 from Peter Cottontail to Australia, Australia bans cash, bans cash for all purchases over $7,500 starting next year. Oh shit, Sherlock. Uh, and, and you better believe you're going to see this story all over. Uh, you don't have to go to Australia. I just have to go to South Austin, Texas, where I tried to go to a uh, where I tried to go to a Korean restaurant recently in South Austin, Texas, and I ordered my food, uh, which was seven dollars, and I pulled out a ten dollar bill. And I was told that they do not accept cash at their Korean restaurant. Cash will no longer be accepted. And if you try to read that little message off the dollar bill that says by federal law, cash will be accepted. And I, the same thing happened uh, at a bar in Seattle last fall. Uh, when they, you could only pay for your drinks on a credit card, uh, this will be a, a regularly recurring feature. Uh, okay. Uh, if you're not aware of it, two-thirds of Brits not interested in the royal wedding uh, according to this new poll. Uh, what are some of the, the mothers of the years? This is, uh, I guess this is, is no way for me to uh, raise funds on YouTube. This is from Cambodia. Mom arrested after she filmed herself skinning and consuming endangered cats, lizards, and stingrays to earn money on YouTube. And before she was arrested, she managed to raise $500 by people uh, cheering on her, skinning and eating all of these endangered species while filming herself. Uh, I wanted many stories on this uh, California couple uh, being charged with neglecting and torturing their 10 
children in feces uh, covered home. Many versions of this story all over the planet. She is 30, he is 29. They already have 10 children uh, aged 4 months to uh, 12 years old. And just I just want to see how many people are going to call Hambone Littletail a racist for sharing this photo. Uh, it's particularly this gentleman on the left. Uh, th there you go. Uh, anyway, as several uh, commenters pointed out, a picture says a thousand words. You are looking at what a 29-year-old father of 10 uh, looks like. And this is in California. But we're going to wrap up with this story that many of uh, my Alert Tribes members have sent me. And, and I sniff fake news here, guys, because I refuse to believe anybody could be this stupid. Family realizes pet dog might be a bear after animal starts to walk around on its hind legs. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's see, according to the Independent, this is Su Yun from Kunning in blah blah, somewhere in China, bought a puppy on vacation believing it to be a Tibetan Mastiff and brought the animal home. From day one, the family was impressed by their pet's massive appetite. The dog reportedly chowed down on a box of fruit and two buckets of noodles every day, but it was not until their pet reached 250 pounds and started walking around on its hind legs that they realized there was a mistake. Their dog was actually an Asiatic black bear. And if you don't know uh, the difference between a Tibetan Mastiff and a, and a black bear looks kind of like that last couple I just showed. Anyway, but I better wrap it up here before I, uh, I get my second charge of being a racist uh, for, for showing pictures. Uh, I'm already a, a racist against white people for using the term honky, so I better be real careful. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this week's, uh, well, today's Doomsday Headlines for Tuesday, May 15th. And now that I've cooled my brain off, come back and read this George Monbio story from The Guardian uh, for my collapsed, Collapsed Chronicles channel. Bye, guys. Yes, little log. You say, Pop, it's nice to be cool.